bring in uh, Barry Knapp, Managing Partner and Director of Research at Ironsides. I always like to say that, macroeconomics. Uh, uh, thanks for joining us. Doesn't mean a lot to, uh, to a lot of people, uh, Barry. You talk like George C. Scott, but your company's named after uh, Raymond Burr, so it's all very, uh, all very confusing, but welcome. Good morning. There it is. Uh, I want to hear that patent, patent speech. So I was struck yesterday how quickly the markets reacted to, uh, I guess, a slightly cooler number. And initially, uh, everything's kind of rallied. We saw the, the stock market rally. We saw bonds rally. We saw yields fall. All kind of reversed itself. Once we realized that maybe the Fed is accomplishing what it intended, we realized that what it intended was basically a, a pretty sharp slowdown. So it's like we, you know, we get what we want with the pivot eventually, but we realize, wow, we may go into a mild recession. So we're not sure what to do, traders. I think that um, the, the real disconcerting part of all this is that um, they seem determined to get to a particular level of rates come hell or high water. And, and where I'm going with that is, you know, Chairman Powell laid out this framework for inflation back on November 30th in his Brookings speech. And he clearly pointed to core services, less rent of shelter as the real insidious part of inflation. This idea that wage growth in the services sector would push prices and it would just become intractable embedded into expectations. Well, pretty much from the moment he spoke those words, that whole narrative has fallen apart. Services sector Consumption peaked in the third quarter, slowed to 1.6% in the fourth quarter. It looks that it, like it's, it's slowed further in 2023. Wages have come down in the services sector um, at least a percent and a half through that time period. And that core measure he was talking about was 9.5% on a six-month annualized basis at the end of September. It's down to three. And that was, you know, that was part of the number yesterday was... The only reason that we're getting any push in core inflation right now is those goofy housing measures or shelter measures. So, you know, they, they've had this narrative. They said, well, this is what we're worrying about. It got better. And yet they're still intent on continuing to raise rates. And as you intimated, Joe, the banking problems are solely of the Fed's making. I mean, I was absolutely adamant at the beginning of this process that the way they had eased was primarily asset purchases if they insisted on tightening by going very passively with unwinding the asset purchases and aggressive with the rate hikes, they were going to cause a deep inversion of the yield curve that was going to impair the basic business banking business model. And sure enough, that's what they've done. So, you know, they've put this, they've, they've created this big fat tail risk of a serious slowdown in bank lending and bank credit that's been evident in the last couple of weeks of Fed data. And they've, they've created the risk of a, a much worse economic outcome, and they seem oblivious to it. I understand why they don't want to admit that it was their fault, but at least respond to it. And um, it, it clearly calls for a pause, and uh, perhaps they're going to even have to reverse some of the hikes. But, um, you know, they again, they just seem intent. The interview Sarah gave yesterday was particularly disquieting. Um, she seemed to mo know more about the economic numbers than, uh, than Harker did, and there's just no acknowledgement that their policy is creating instability in the banks. Yeah.